Today I'm going to show you 10 things that you have to be doing in Return to Moria. The first thing you should be doing in Return to Moria is going through all of your building menus. C, V, and B on PC. C is your quick craft for all your basic tools. B is your quick build for your platforms to get around the game. And B is your main crafting page, which you should just about craft everything that's in here. At least once. Tip number two has to do with the carvings. You'll find little figurines all around the game, everywhere you go. Once you find enough of each figurine for each of these chests, you can replace them and it'll open it up and give you invaluable resources. And yes, it doesn't tell you, but they are chests. Tip number three has to come from blocking. It's probably the best thing in the game. When you block, you take zero damage and also it causes a slight stagger. So you can get a free hit, hit in always. And you can block while swinging. If you go to swing and realize that you're about to get hit, you can always just counter and block again. Tip number four is repair all the statues you find in the game. These statues will give you your major crafting recipes for better weapons and armor throughout your entire playthrough. You will find these statues scattered everywhere throughout Moria. Tip number five is pick up everything. Pick up all the mushrooms you see, pick up all the ore you see, pick up all the scrap iron you see. And Tip number six and seven both have to do with the orc camps that you find scattered throughout Moria. Once you've killed the orcs in an orc camp, you'll notice that there's a chest that you need an orc key to unlock. How you get this key is by destroying this little flag in the middle. And then you can open the chest. Tip number seven is when you destroy the flag, the orcs will stop spawning. I haven't found a singular reason why this was bad yet in the game, but you never know. Food for thought. Tip number eight is repair the Great Forge. The Great Forge you find very early in the game in the first elven area, and it allows you to craft Mastercraft items. It is a must, and you have to do it. Mastercraft items do not degrade, and they're some of the best pieces of armor and equipment in the game. Tip number nine is stack your resources. You don't want to have to constantly go back and try to find iron ore when you can have pallets of it laying around. There's a lot of times later in the game, the further you progress, where you're going to need previous materials. And if you haven't unlocked the black diamond teleport stones yet, then spoiler alert, but you, you'll have a hard time going back for certain resources. So anytime you see resources, collect it and run it back to your camp, even if it seems tedious to do so. Tip number 10 is have fun with the game. There's all kinds of stuff to find and explore and do, and this is the first halfway decent Lord of the Rings game that we've had in forever. You never know what you can find, and you really get a sense of immersion the more you look around and the more you platform your way through the levels and delve deeper into each mining node and find new gems, rare gems, and get new crafting recipes. It's, the game has a continuous sense of rewarding accomplishment, so every time you unlock something new, the game feels like you have to craft it now, which is good because it pushes you to do things that you probably wouldn't normally do. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends if they need any help.